Hello, hello. Welcome in to your training on Friday. We're here in beautiful Mission Valley, San Diego, California. What is up, baby? What's up? Happy Friday. We got our Star Wars shirts on. Oh, yeah. Get ready for an awesome team. You're surfing Star Wars, though. Well, I mean, I have a theme today with our awesome friends and family partners here over with Fairway. We got some awesome beach cleanup stuff, so oh, yeah. they invited us to that. So I'm going to do my part for Earth Day and get together and do some beach cleanup. So what a cool thing to do. Uh, what about a shirt for beach cleanup? Yeah, well, <laughs> stormtroopers. I could be on the dark side, but I still could be like spring kind of like blue out. So like, like dark side. it was like when they weren't, when he wasn't too sure that he was going to the dark side. So right, it was right. that nice. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. Another Friday training here. Um, super excited to bring this one to you. We came up with a cool little lean on me theme. Oh my gosh, <laughs> lean on me. So lean as in L-I-E-N, a lean, something you would find on the title report. If you're wondering, mm -hmm. this is a title training, type or title talk, lean on me. So you had a cool story about this one, don't you? Yeah, so the way we kind of came up with this week's training was I got a phone call and the phone call was from an agent and they were kind of like, hey, can you review this preliminary report with me? We have a problem on here. We need to get something paid off. So I pull up the report and I'm looking at it. And I'm like, yeah, what, what's going on? It looks like, you know, we just have the mortgage. And they're like, no, there's that big lead on there. Like that $500,000 lead. And I, you what know, you and, and in my mind, I kind of just chuckled a little bit. But then it also hit me with reality. Like, whoa, Ryan and I, we're, we're the title providers. We should definitely be letting you guys know. We should be educating you guys on the difference of a lien and a mortgage on there and the deed of trust on there. Yeah, um, it's super so, common. Well, yeah. You know, it's like an what, abstract kind of an anomaly type lien. Exactly. So, you know, I chuckled a little bit, but it also kind of slapped me with reality like, wow, I, you, you don't know what the deed of trust is on here? Like, yeah, we got to pay this off, but don't worry. It's something that gets taken out of the proceeds. It's paid through escrow. This is what they're going to be paying off when they sell their home. So. We got into the whole explanation, and at the end of it, he was like, oh my gosh, like, yeah, nah. I know what this is, of like, yeah. Of course I knew that. Yeah. Well, I knew that. Yeah. So it just kind of hit me with a shocker, and I called Ryan, and I was like, hey, we got to do our training on, you know, the difference between the kind of anomaly leads that we see that come up, and then what the actual main mortgage is, payoffs, you know, if there's a second on there what that really means and how we step in and we work with escrow to get those taken care of. And we, like, we, like Kaylee said, we own that. It's on us to bring you that information and we're all on a different path, step on the pathway, right? Some people are 23 steps on a 25 step pathway. They're down their vets, right? They know this stuff. Some people are just getting started. So mm -hmm. we want to bring information for the brand new agent, the team leader, the brokerage owner, the attorney that does real estate for all of you guys. So for me, I mean, like the more, the more, the more, right? The more we can bring, the more value we can add, the more education. So the big 400, 200, $600,000 lien on there is a deed of trust. A deed of trust is another way of saying a mortgage, right? So it's very common, especially here in Southern California and California in general, that a mortgage is needed to buy a piece of property. So that is the big one. That's the one that gets the takeout lender comes in, pays them off becomes a new lender on the property, and that's super common. To and you'll see. typically see a pretty common name on there too, you know, like you'll see a Wells Fargo, you'll see a big Chase, you'll see something pretty typical that you know, like, oh, this is their mortgage payment to be paid off. Sometimes, you know, especially it's very common, we see a lot, people take out seconds, they take out, you know, home equity lines of credit. Line credit. So you'll see a $50,000 loan, mm -hmm. a little smaller amount after that big mortgage, that's just a line of credit. So maybe they pulled it out, took out some cash to do some repairs to the home, or just wanted some extra cash, they took out a little second. There's tons of things that can be done with that. Yeah, so, and our awesome team that's not on camera all the time like us, they go through the prelims and they send you little notes to say, hey, Katie and Shelby are right over there, probably sending out prelims right now. <laughs> and one, you're breaking the song. And <laughs> okay, sorry. Okay. And we're back. Okay. And so they are the ones that go through it. And so when you see no red flags on this one, you know, Susie agent or what have you, that means that there's probably a mortgage. Mm -hmm. Maybe the second installment of the taxes are due on the property. Just basic stuff that you can expect to see on a prelim. So Haley, my question to you is. If I can kind of expect to see a first mortgage or maybe a second, 
What is something that's just like creatures from the Black Lagoon, like <laughs> kind of a lean that we can that we see? Like, you'll see like abstract of judgment. It doesn't say lean on there, but yeah. you know that's another word for lean. So, so. that was usually some, a judge made a judgment mm -hmm. that cost uh, some kind of financial thing on property that they attach to the property. That's what an abstract mm -hmm. judgment. So what are all the things that can happen in court? Like I don't know, child support, accidents. Something you heard. credit cards. I've yeah. even seen ones. I mean, I've seen ones revenue and recovery where their child, their kid, did something, and that lien attaches to them because they are the ones that have to pay due to the damages of their kid. So I've seen revenue and recovery for that yeah. kind of stuff. So those liens come up as well. There's a lot of things that can go credit cards, IRS, if you're not paying your taxes. Uh, Anything a judge could find, make a judgment on and attach to it. And I, it reminds me in high school, I drove through the neighbor's bushes where I was a new driver, okay, and took out some expensive landscaping. Thank goodness the neighbor was cool with me just cleaning it up instead of like leaving the house, you know. But that, that kid, I could have been taken to court and found guilty of driving through their lawn. Reckless driving <laughs> over here. Six, man, 16 years old, it was a different life, okay. But, but yeah, I've gotten better since then. And, uh, I don't know about that, I've driven with them. <laughs> so <laughs> liens can come all over the place. I mean, right. Traffic violations can end up well, on there. And somehow. too, it's important to know that also some of these liens don't only attach to the APN, but they can also attach to the seller's name. And the when they're security you know, number. when they're attached to the social social security number, those still need to be paid off in order to transfer title. So you know, we have seen EDD with the education or um, employment department come in, mm -hmm. and you know, people are getting liens for not paying employees things with business bureaus, all sorts of different kinds of liens come up. So those can all attach to your your um, social security number and the APN. So those all come up on a preliminary report, what we pull. So, you know, there's difference between what we get the payoffs for, for the mortgages and those, and then escrow is very, very knowledgeable about being able to order demands through courts and that kind of stuff. So they handle ordering all those but it's important to know that you may not just have a mortgage on there as a payoff. So there is other things that could come up and typically on all those preliminary reports, those liens and the payoffs are towards the bottom after all the easements and matters and that kind of information. So. And have no fear, lean on us, right? That's yes. it's the name of the video, lean on me. When you have a question about what the heck this creature from the Blue Lagoon is on the lien on your prelim, Call us. We've already gone through it and we kind of give you a skimmed version in the email of any red flags to be aware of. But when all else fails, we welcome those calls. We want, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. That consultation, that going over the prelim real quick, that enables you to go into the seller and break it down for them smartly, accurately, and with confidence. That's what we look for. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. And I know Brian and I have mentioned this ad nauseum, but we just want to let you guys know too that on a preliminary report, there's a lot of common names. Things can come up because liens do attach to a social security number, especially here in Southern California. We have a lot of common names. So if anything comes up on the preliminary report and your seller is like, well, not me. I don't know what this is. I don't have anything to do with this. Get us the statement of information with their social security number, past information, and we can most of the time clear those liens off the report. Every once in a while, we get like, hey, this is our hit, like this is actually them, so we do have to order a demand and get this paid off, so that does happen. I know we've mentioned that story multiple times, so oh, yeah. always get us the statement of information if you see anything wonky on there, if you're sellers, and you know, we actually, at Tycor, we, a lot of companies run buyers, most title companies do run buyers. If I were a buyer and I was coming into a property, I would want to know if I had a lien on me. I think that is very valuable. We can, obviously you can still insure, so that is very important to know too. If a lien comes up on a buyer, please call us, let us know, because we can still insure it. The lender just has to say, that's fine to show in the final title policy report. 99% right. of the time, that is totally fine. It's totally okay to show. It just means it has to get paid off when the seller goes to, when the new buyers go to sell their property. And we can also strike those items we find on the incoming buyer from the report altogether because some lenders don't want to see it. Exactly. So go so, either way with that, but we'd rather enable you and educate you of what, once you're in, you're the buyer, we close, you've got something to fix. Well, yeah. you got plenty of time to fix well, it. 
coming from an agent's perspective, if that was my buyer and they found out, maybe they go to refinance their property and they had a lien on them that they didn't know about because another title company was so like, oh, we're not going to we're not gonna run the buyer. It's okay. Right. Um, and then, of course, that can, that's going to come back on you. And they're going to be like, hey, how was I able to buy this house when I had this lien on me that now they're telling me I have to pay off before I can even refinance or go to sell? So I think it's extremely important for you guys as agents and, you know, just to make sure to give that education to your buyers because we've had that come up. And always, always, always call us if something does come up on the buyers because we definitely know how to work it. It can show the report. We well, and if it's like John Johnson or Dave Davidson, right? I mean, that you could enlighten them to the fact that there's a lien that isn't theirs. Mm -hmm on their social security that they're bringing into them now attaching to the APN. So who knows what all kinds of chaos you could avoid for your customer just by knowing a little bit. So we are happy to have you lean on us and to definitely explain and go over the prelim. We have seen all kinds of nasty stuff and once it attaches to that APN, you guys, it's gotta be resolved. So many people say, well, that's for the spouse and I'll just quit claim the spouse off the title and then all the liens and all the garbage goes with them, right? <laughs> and, and especially too, if they were on title all the time those leads were acquired, I'm, I, I hate to break it to you guys, we're pretty smart at title companies, we will find out, we will see that, you know, they were on title at the time the liens were acquired. So, yeah. unfortunately, it's not that easy just to be like, oh, they have liens, Meh, quick claim them off. Um, and that's why we open when you get the listing, when you have ink, when you let us know pre-escrow so we have a little bit of runway to get out there and fix these kinds of items because it's better to just deal with it than try to sweep it under the rug because like she said, in 2007, Lucy was on title and Lucy had a gnarly $40,000 state tax lien, okay? And then she deed it off in 2008, but we have to deal with 2007 mm -hmm. still. And she was on there then, so that lien applies. So we've got to get and fix that and show satisfaction of the lien. But there's a process, we do it every day. Mm -hmm. I know it seems daunting, but just the earlier you engage us, the more runway we have, the faster we can fix it with the less heartburn. Well, possible. what's your favorite little saying you like to say? And I don't know which one. An ounce of prevention can, what is it? An ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure, right? Yeah. yeah. There we go. So if we can just take a little ounce of prevention, we don't have that 11th hour, everybody oh. freaking out, saying, eh, this is good, the deal's ending, it's going to, you know, it's going to ruin the deal, the deal's done. We want to be able to be your advocates, make sure we don't have that happen. And, you know, this is what we do every day. We fight for you guys, we're on it, we make sure that we get the proper documentation that's needed, and we're always here to help. So, um, yeah. hope you guys got a little knowledge today, little difference between liens, but yes, lean on us, we're your title team, we can help you decipher any questions you have on the preliminary report, we have a great staff behind us to help out as well, so. Yeah, put questions in the comments, call us, writinglipsy.com, you can find all of us there, has cell phones and stuff, text us. This is an open dialogue. Even if you think it might be maybe questionably an issue, call us. Now we will shine a big bright light on that thing and see exactly what we're dealing with. And honestly, most of the time, once you achieve clarity, it ain't half as bad as we thought it was coming in. So let's take a look. Let's get the big bright light out and take a look under the microscope and see what it is. And uh, we are good at that. We pick up the rocks and look at the squiggly things on the bottom and help you fix them fast. So that's what we do. That was a good one, right? I liked it. Okay. Hopefully we were able to help you guys today. And yeah. Let's have get a on with weekend. our... Even though we don't have weekends in our industry, but it's okay. <laughs> our weekends are a busy time for us, but let's get out there. Hopefully we get a little sunshine coming in. I and I hope to see some of you guys at the beach cleanup in celebration of Earth Day. Beach cleanup at 4 o'clock, oh. Mission Bay. Yep, and I know they're going to do like a little bonfire after and some stuff, so... Yeah, it'll be a fun little time. Good job. Way to save the world. One piece of trash at a time. That's, That's all it takes. Works. One awesome. person at a time. Can you imagine if we had one person everywhere doing that, like the difference it would just make? It's crazy. You don't I'm going to pick up a little bit of trash in Carl's bed just well, to be part of the spirit and the team. And then real quick, you know, you put this perspective, people are a lot of like, well, what am I going to, like, what is the one difference? I mean, think about it. You're one person doing that and multiply that by thousands. That is a lot of people doing what you're doing, helping yeah. protect. So always think about that. Don't ever put that in your mind of like, well, it's just me. Like, I'm not going to make a difference because you will make a difference. Well, you, do you help. Somebody might see you, like, I don't know, your child or another neighbor or somebody else on the beach, and you might stop them from littering, mm -hmm. or you might inspire them 
So pick up some trash too. So you don't know who's watching, guys, and what message are we sending? So good stuff. Good on you. Guys. Yeah. Way to go. That's a feel good moment. Well, thank for the you, Caraway, for putting that on because we're stoked. Yeah, absolutely. So that brings us to the end of our training. We appreciate you so much, and we are here to answer any questions. Thank you for sharing, engaging, commenting. We're here to receive your calls, and emails, and texts anytime. And that's it. All right. See you Bye. next time.